What about this picture? One female to one male, perfect one-to-one -one ratio, or is it? Sex ratios, a population sex ratio can affect its growth rate. The naturally occurring sex ratio in humans is 105 to 106 males for every 100 females. So why more males? This may be an evolutionary adaptation as males are slightly more prone to death at any given age. The ratio of men to women is therefore approximately equal at reproductive age. And so that's what you would want if you're going to have the most successful reproduction uh, program. There are four factors that affect population growth rates. There, we have birth rate plus immigration rate. These are um, increasing the growth rate. Minus death rate and emigration rate. These are working to reduce the growth rate. So the difference between these two opposing factors is what you're left with as your net population growth rate. Immigration and emigration do play a large role, especially today, where people are more mobile, um, greater transportation, things like this. Um, we see here in this picture refugees from the 1994 Rwandan genocide who endured great hardship. And they also deforested large areas near refugee camps for their resources. So there can be environmental impacts as well to migration. We do know that birth rates are dropping in many countries. So um, this term here, okay, let's, this is China. And let's take a look. The, from 1950, the total fertility rate was 5.8. 5.8 children born to each woman on average. Today, or 2005, is 1.6. What we mean by this rate of natural population increase, natural population increase means birth minus death. So immigration and emigration are being ignored in that. It's just natural from birth and death, not relocation. And we can see that that number has also declined um, in China. So we saw this already. Just um, This is one thing that can explain um, lower growth rates is a drop in total fertility rates. So what, is what does fertility rate mean? Total fertility rate, TFR, equals the average number of children born per woman during her lifetime. Replacement fertility is the TFR that keeps population size stable. This is, um, you can imagine what that number might be. You think it's two, huh? You're wrong. For humans, replacement fertility is about 2.1. We have to account for infant mortality or anyone dying before they've reached reproductive age. This is some um, total fertility rates by region. We need to note here that Africa is the highest, 5.1, and Europe is the lowest at 1.4. So Europe is actually a shrinking population. They are not, because they're lower than 2.1, even North America, being Canada and the US, is less than the total, is less than the replacement fertility rate. So you see an old person holding a young person. These two things come together um, to create that natural rate of population change. And so this is restating what we said earlier. The population change due to birth and death rates alone, excluding migration. It's often expressed in percent per year. And Europe's natural rate of population change is negative 0.1%. means its population is actually decreasing by one-tenth of 1% 1 per year. This is confirmed by the fact that its TFR is 1.4, below the 2.1 needed to maintain population size. Some of you will see this in your age structure diagrams in the lab that we're doing. This is a model that is referred to a lot in population studies, the demographic transition. You should copy this into your notes. It's a big deal, big idea, and we'll be discussing it more tomorrow. And it can also help explain different shaped age structure diagrams. Um, there are four stages to it, the pre-industrial stage, transitional stage, industrial stage, and post-industrial stage. And birth, death, birth rate and death rate are high in, um, in a pre-industrial stage. So you would call this an undeveloped country. High birth, high death, but stable population. Transitional stage is when it's becoming developed, meaning you're getting less death rate, decline. this declines due to increased food production and improved medical care. But the birth rate is staying high because people are used to having lots of babies. So what you get is lots more people. You have a booming population. In the industrial stage, the birth rate begins to decline due to increased opportunities for women and access to birth control. And so now they begin to catch back up with each other. And in the post-industrial stage, which you could say the US is in, you have birth rate low and death rate both being low and again, a stabilized population. 
So this word, kind of a mouthful, but it means a model of economic and cultural change to explain declining birth and death rates and rising life expectancies in nations as they become industrialized. By life expectancy, we mean average number of years a person in an age group is likely to continue to live. It often refers to the number of years a newborn is expected to live before dying. So if we say in a country that life expectancy, expectancy is 65, a newborn can expect to live that long. So these are the stages, um, and this would be good things to write down in your notes too. Pre-industrial stage, you have high death rates and high birth rates. Transitional stage, death rates fall due to rising food production, better medical care. Birth rates remain high, so population surges. Industrial stage, birth rates fall as women are employed and as children become less economically useful in an urban setting. Population growth rate declines. In the post-industrial stage, birth and death rates remain low and stable. Society enjoys fruits of industrialization without threat of runaway population growth. So this is kind of nice. You have a small population. That population can be more affluent and still have the same impact as a larger population. The TFR decline in Bangladesh. Let's take a look at this one here. Because Bangladesh was able to reduce their TFR from 7.1 to 4.6 in 25 years. It's a big jump. And it, it is at 3.0 today. So this is, I mean, this is a drastic jump from 1960 to 2010. What's responsible for it? Two things, family planning and education. Two that have been shown repeatedly to lower birth rates. We'll talk about why some of that is in class. So I would like you to write a summary paragraph at the end of your notes of the main concepts presented here. See you tomorrow in class.